Maintenance checks include engine idle, dwell, and ignition timing at the correct time and mileage intervals. Now, the transmission controlled spark system. Initially installed on all 1970 Chevrolets. It's designed to provide vacuum spark advance only during high gear operation. A vacuum control valve, here, operates in response to signals from two switches. This switch tells the valve electrically when the transmission is in high or low gear. This switch senses the coolant temperature in the cylinder head and provides full vacuum to the distributor advance while the engine is cold. So the engine gets vacuum spark advance when it's needed, cold operation and in high gear. But it does not get it in low gear, thus significantly reducing exhaust emissions. Maintenance includes periodic electrical and vacuum connection checks. In 1971, the transmission controlled spark and the controlled combustion features were combined in one system. called, appropriately, the Combination Emission Control System. It consists of a transmission control switch, a reversing relay, a time delay relay, an engine temperature switch, and a valve that combines the TCS and CCS functions. Maintenance on Combination Emission Control System includes periodic electrical and vacuum connection checks, plus all the important engine idle, dwell, and ignition timing settings in accordance with the specs for that engine. The effects of even slight variations are significant. When an engine is properly tuned, that is, the air-fuel mixture, idle RPMs, timing, and there are no fouled plugs, points, or other electrical problems, exhaust emissions are within the low limits. Change anything, and the picture changes drastically. Say the timing has advanced a mere five degrees. Hydrocarbons go way up. Suppose the engine misses once in 20 cycles. Hydrocarbons go up 300%. Or suppose the engine idle is slightly below the specified RPMs. There's a big jump in hydrocarbons. A significant increase in carbon monoxide. Of course, a combination of wrong adjustments could really send the emission tester right off the scale. The answer is strict adherence to the specifications for that particular engine. There's one more major emission control component, the evaporation control system. When the engine is running, fuel vapors are drawn by engine vacuum from the fuel tank through this carbon canister and into the engine where they're burned. When the engine is not running, vapors from the tank bleed off into the canister. Here they're absorbed by activated charcoal and retained until the engine is started. From this point on, the vapors are drawn into the engine where they're burned. Service for the system is simple. Replace the filter in the base of the canister every 12 months or 12,000 miles. There you have a quick review of the major emission control systems positive crankcase ventilation valve, air injection reactor, controlled combustion, transmission controlled spark, combination emission control, and evaporation control. Together, they cut vehicle emissions by 80% for hydrocarbons, 65% for carbon monoxide, and 33% for oxides of nitrogen, measured against the uncontrolled car. This is an outstanding contribution toward clean air, but it only occurs when the systems are properly maintained and serviced. Sure, you can't do the job unless the owners bring their cars in, but you can educate them, help sell them on the idea of timely emission control system maintenance, and you can make sure the job is done correctly. In the future, your role in automotive emission control will become even greater. Systems may be more complex, require more involved maintenance than presently necessary, and additional systems will be introduced. For example, a catalytic converter will probably become a part of our emission control system. Installed in the exhaust, it contains chemical pellets that convert unburned hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide 
into harmless carbon dioxide and water vapor. It requires lead-free gas, but this availability is improving, and so the catalytic converter shows real promise in further reducing exhaust emissions. Also under development is advanced air injection for a longer, hotter afterburn, and large insulated exhaust manifolds for reduced emissions. Your emission control work is going to increase and become more important. When all owners get with it, bring their cars in for service on time, and you can help influence them to do this, and their emission control systems are maintained properly, air pollution related to automobiles will go down and down and down until the automobile has, in effect, been removed from our air pollution problem. We can't do much about pollution caused by nature, but we can make sure we get the best out of the emission control systems we have on our automobiles.